Okay, now that I'm done reviewing all the movies in the MCU, I can actually talk about the one that we all really care about, Avengers Endgame. And I want to get this video out the day before Endgame comes out, so it'll probably be Wednesday that you're watching this. I am going to sit here and predict the fate of every living Avenger by the end of the movie. Um, now, the reason that I'm only focusing on the living ones is because, I mean, sequels for Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, Black Panther are already either confirmed, in development, or about to come out. So it's just, we don't really have to speculate too much. I mean, Falcon and Winter Soldier are getting their own show. Uh, Scarlet Witch and Vision are getting their own show. There's no point in trying to speculate the characters that are dead. So, let's begin with the godfather of the MCU, Iron Man. I don't actually think that Iron Man is going to die... Because, I mean, it seems obvious, right? It's like, that's the end of his arc. And it is the end of his arc. I feel like after Avengers Endgame, we will have a complete, no more room to grow story arc for Iron Man from 2008 to 2019. That being said, um, I think, I, I don't think that him dying is the way that it has to go. I won't even say that it's weak or lazy. I think it would be better, though, if he gets to have what he's always wanted and just have a normal life with Pepper. He passes the torch on to Peter. Uh, he and Pepper get married. They have a kid. And then they just live their lives. I think that would be a very good way for Tony's story to end. Captain America. I Because I don't think Iron Man is going to die. As much as I like the idea that somehow, maybe by the time stone or whatever, Captain America gets blown back to the 40s and gets to live his life with Peggy. I don't think that that would be enough for him. It's already been been established that he can't he can't live without war. He's not a character that can just lie low and chill for the rest of his days. He would either have to die or be fighting. So I think he's actually going to die in some sort of last ditch effort to take Thanos down. That's just where I think Captain America's story has to end. Thor. Now Thor is actually kind of in an interesting place as far as the original Avengers go. He's had a lot of character development, but he hasn't changed much as a character. From the end of Thor all the way up to uh, Avengers Age of Ultron, he was one static character with like no development whatsoever. Ragnarok is the one that actually started changing who he is to push him forward as a character, and then that carried over to Infinity War. Not exactly the tone of Ragnarok, but the version of Thor that they were developing for that particular story. So I think it would be foolish to kill Thor at this point in time, I do think you can end his story and then send him off to, like, find somewhere for the rest of the Asgardians to live because it has been confirmed that not all the Asgardians died. Because remember at the beginning of Infinity War, the ship was broken into two pieces and the other piece that didn't get blown up by Thanos was the one that had Valkyrie and all the other um, Asgardians on it. So I think he's going to be finding somewhere for them to live to call that place Asgard now. The Hulk has had the absolute least character development across all all the movies. He's been in like five now, including Endgame, and he's hardly changed whatsoever. But because the Hulk is a very difficult character to write and not many people seem to be able to do it at all, in fact, I don't think anyone's written him well in the MCU to this point, I think it would just be best to kill him off because he's just dead weight. I mean, he's been significantly nerfed. He's never going to be as strong as he is in the comics. Uh, he's always been sidelined by Tony's brain and Thor's power. It's just like, you don't get scientist Bruce Banner and you don't get super strong Hulk. So there's really no point in keeping him around if he's just going to be wasting screen time and CGI budget. So killing him off is, I think, the wisest thing to do and is what I am expecting them to do in this movie. Black Widow. Well, we already know that she's getting a solo movie, but there's no reason that her solo movie can't be set before. But what I think it's actually going to do is, like, she's... In the middle of solving something now, then there's flashbacks to explore her. I just hope it's not like an Atomic Blonde type situation. But um, since she's getting her own movie, and I don't really see them doing another movie set in the past to avoid, you know, anachronisms in the timeline, I'm pretty sure they're going to be keeping her alive. Especially because, like, she, she's had some character development. She's had significantly more character development than Thor or the Hulk. She's gone from somebody who just followed orders blindly to somebody who uh, decided to start making her own decisions to follow what she thought was right to people to someone that will fight the people that she calls friends and family in order to protect what she thinks is the right thing. She's changed a lot over the course of the movies. 
but I think she's still got a little bit more growing to do before they send her off, so I'm sure she's going to make it to the end of this movie. Hawkeye. Hawkeye is probably my favorite Avenger from the first two Avengers movies. Uh, and because of the fact that, you know, he's got his family or whatever, and they did that so that he couldn't get with Black Widow, blah, blah, blah. I think that to kill him, because his family probably got dusted, would be kind of weak. I feel like he already has his own life going on. But at the same time, you could use that as an explanation for why he should die. But I don't think that they've used Hawkeye to his full potential, and also he's getting his own show, so I just don't see him dying in this one. I'm sure he'll make it. War Machine, getting a show, but also, even if he wasn't getting a show, I feel like killing him off would be a smart thing to do. He's dead weight, just like uh, the Hulk is. He doesn't do anything. He hasn't changed as a character. He just goes around doing what's right, and that's all he really cares about is a pursuit of justice. So, I don't know, I mean... He's probably going to survive because he's got, he's got his own show, but I don't need him to continue on. So he could die, he could live, doesn't matter to me. Ant-Man. I really like the Ant-Man character, but the thing is, he's only done four movies so far, so I'm sure he's still got another Avengers movie and another Ant-Man movie to do before his contract would be up. So I'm pretty sure I can look you in the soul right now and tell you, Ant-Man's not going to die in this movie. I just don't see it happening. In fact, most people are pretty sure that he's the key to defeating Thanos by some sort of quantum realm mumbo-jumbo. I don't know. I don't care enough to theorize that far. I'm just having fun speculating who might live or die. But Ant-Man, he's going to live. Rocket Raccoon. <laughs> it's kind of funny that I have to put him in this list, but he's still alive. So, I mean, he's a supporting character of the Guardians of the Galaxy. So, of course, he's going to live. They're not going to kill off the trash panda. I mean, he's another thing, he's people's favorite character. So you can't just kill him off after he's only been in four movies. It's, it's the same thing as uh, Ant-Man. He's still got more to do. Bradley has more to do contractually, so they're not done yet. Nebula is another one that can kind of go either way because I'm pretty sure she's not signed to as many... I'm pretty sure Karen Gillan isn't signed to as many movies as, like, Chris Pratt is. Four movies so far, so I'm sure he's still got another Avengers movie and another Ant-Man movie to do before his contract would be up. So I'm pretty sure I can look you in the soul right now and tell you Ant-Man's not going to die in this movie. I just don't see it happening. In fact, most people are pretty sure that he's the key to defeating Thanos by some sort of quantum realm mumbo-jumbo. I don't know. I don't care enough to theorize that far. I'm just having fun speculating who might live or die. But Ant-Man, he's going to live. Rocket Raccoon. <laughs> it's kind of funny that I have to put him in this list, but he's still alive. So, I mean, he's a supporting character of the Guardians of the Galaxy. So, of course, he's going to live. They're not going to kill off the trash panda. I mean, he's another thing, he's people's favorite character. So you can't just kill him off after he's only been in four movies. It's, it's the same thing as uh, Ant-Man. He's still got more to do. Bradley has more to do contractually, so they're not done yet. Nebula is another one that can kind of go either way because I'm pretty sure she's not signed to as many... I'm pretty sure Karen Gillan isn't signed to as many movies as, like, Chris Pratt is. There's an ice cream truck going outside my house. But I'm pretty sure that, like, if they decided to kill her off now, they could without any contractual problems. And as a character, she's not really worth a whole lot. 